Short question, but rather long exercise. Calculate the Fraunhofer diffraction pattern of a circular aperture. So just to sketch the problem, if you have an aperture in a screen here, so a circular aperture uh, like this, so this is opaque and the light just uh, shines through the circular aperture. The question is, what is the field, which we will denote by u, x0, y0, what is the field that you see in some sort of xy plane at a certain distance z from your aperture? Now, Fraunhofer diffraction tells you that the field at the coordinates x0, y0, that that is basically proportional to an integral over the field in the aperture plane. So in the aperture plane, you have indices, you have coordinates like x1, y1. So you have a two-dimensional integral over the field that you find in your aperture. So u x1, y1. Um, times a exponential factor, which is exponential j 2 pi divided by lambda z. And then you have x0, x1 plus y0, y1. And then you integrate that over x1 and y1. So this is the formula for Fraunhofer diffraction. In our case, we're dealing with a circular aperture, so everything is circularly symmetric. So it makes a lot of sense to try and rewrite that formula using cylindrical coordinates. So for example, in the aperture plane, in the aperture plane, I suggest that you write x0 as, sorry, x1 as rho 1 times cosine theta 1. And likewise, y1 rho 1 sine theta 1. And now you do something similar in the observation xy plane, where you have x0, rho 0, cosine theta 0, and then also similarly with the sine for the y. So what I suggest you do now is pause the video, uh, introduce this substitution into the Fraunhofer diffraction integral, and see where that takes you. Okay, our field now becomes a function of rho and theta, so rho zero, rho zero, theta zero in the observation plane. And then it's proportional to an integral, first of all, of a radial coordinate going from zero to infinity, and then an angular coordinate going from zero to two pi, right? So u in the source plane, now will depend on rho 1 and theta 1. And then we just need to make that substitution into the, the integral here, into the exponential. So that becomes exponential j 2 pi divided by lambda z. And then we always have the product of a 0 and a 1 term here. So that will always result in a rho 1, rho 0 factor, which we can factor out. So row zero, row one. And then we have, if we have a look at the axis, those result in, in cosines. So we have the cosine of theta zero, cosine of theta one. And then for the y terms, sine theta zero, sine theta one. So this is our exponential. And then we have uh, dx one, dy one. In cylindrical coordinates, this becomes rho 1, d rho 1, d theta 1. So, uh, so this is our integral now transformed into cylindrical coordinates. So let's clean things up a little bit here. So this becomes proportional to an integral from 0 to infinity, 0 to 2 pi, u of rho 1 and theta 1. Now obviously since everything is circularly symmetric that also means that in the excitation plane um, we should only have something that depends on rho, rho 1 and not on theta 1 otherwise it would not be rotationally symmetric. And then we have exponential j 2 pi divided by lambda z rho 0 rho 1 um, and then this uh, formula here reduces to the cosine of the difference of these two angles. So let's write that 
as the difference of theta 1 minus theta 0. You could also write this the other way around because the, the cosine is an even function. Um, and then we have rho 1, 0, 1, d theta 1. Okay, um, let's have a look at this theta 0 thing here. So one thing you could do is replace this here by having a substitution theta 1 min theta 0 as a new variable theta 1 prime. Um, if you do that, what will happen basically is, uh, okay, you have the substitution here. This term will not change, but what will change is the bounds here from 0 and 2 pi. So these will get shifted, but the important part is that the bounds are still 2 pi apart. And you have a periodic function over here, so it doesn't really matter which 2 pi period you integrate over. You can shift this as much as you want, as long as you just integrate over uh, any 2 pi uh, interval, basically. So a long story to just uh, show you that basically this, this theta zero here doesn't play a role, uh, again, because we're working in a circularly symmetrical uh, system. So finally, we can simplify this as an integral from zero to infinity, zero to two pi u, depending only on the radial uh, distance here, exponential j two pi divided by lambda z, rho zero, rho one, cosine theta one, rho one, d rho one, d theta one. Okay. Um, what we're now going to do is just introduce an abrupt aperture here. So for our uh, disk-shaped aperture, we're just going to say that as a function of the radial coordinate r1, uh, row 1, our u function is very abrupt and uh, is 1 over here. And at the radius, which we will call a, it just uh, drops to, to 0. So if you make that substitution, and also, if you remind yourself of something that we showed earlier, namely that j naught of x, that you can also write that as 1 over 2 pi, an integral from 0 to 2 pi, exponential jx cosine theta d theta. So this is something we showed in a previous exercise. Now, see if you can make use of that particular function to try and simplify that, uh, that integral. Okay, let's, let's go. Um, first of all, what we can do in this, this integral here is group everything which relates to the theta component together and then see if we can solve that, uh, that first. So what we can do is we can write this as an integral for uh, 0 to a in this case because u uh, drops to 0 after a. Um, and then we have an angular integral, so an integral from 0 to 2 pi of exponential j um, and then we have something times uh, cosine of something else so that's exponential j and let's put that between brackets to make it clear 2 pi lambda z rho 0 rho 1 and then we have cosine theta 1 d theta 1 so that's everything related to theta 1 and then we have row 1 d row 1 <clears throat> now the stuff between square brackets we can simplify that um, using that, uh, that that formula which i had uh, up here so that we can can do now and just in order to to simplify things a little bit um, we can write this as an integral from 0 to a and then the result here will be 1 over 2 pi times a Bessel function of order zero. And then we have x. Now x in this case is just the coefficient in front of the cosine. So that's going to be two pi divided by lambda z rho zero rho one. And then we still have 
row one d row one okay um that looks a lot simpler so now we only have an integral involving here an integration over the uh, the radial distance let's clean this up a little bit by introducing 2 pi divided by lambda z rho 0 rho 1 let's call this the new integration variable rho um, and in this case we will have then the integral 1 over 2 pi from 0 to okay so if rho uh, 1 is equal to a that means now that our new boundary rho will be uh, 2 pi 2 pi uh, rho uh, 0 a divided by lambda z so that's our new upper bound which is a bit uh, complicated to write but let's just call that uh, rho max later on so then we have j naught of rho so that's a simplification and then for uh, rho 1 rho 1 becomes rho divided by 2 pi over lambda z uh, rho 0 and then d rho 1 becomes d rho uh, divided by 2 pi over lambda z rho 0 so just cleaning stuff up here this becomes 1 over 2 pi and then we have uh, because of course this thing cancels and then for the other factors we have lambda z over rho zero squared the integral from zero to what we will call rho max just to make it a little bit easier to write there we have j naught rho rho d rho okay so that looks a lot simpler now the only thing we're left with here is this integral of a Bessel function of order zero times a certain polynomial which is just rho in this case so this is something that you should know how to solve by now so just pause the video try and dig out the correct formula out of your book and solve this uh, this integral let's have a look at the formula to use so the formula that uh, is a prime candidate here is ddx of x to the power of n j n x is equal to x to the power of n j n minus one of x so if you then take the integral of both left hand side and right hand side ddx and the integral will cancel and this will give you a method to calculate this particular integral here now in our case we have an integral of Bessel function of order zero so here we have n minus one so n minus one should be zero or n should be equal to one and then coincidentally that this would also give us an x to the power of one which is that that row over here so that works uh, just fine so we can write that the integral of x j zero of x dx is something that we can write down uh, immediately namely that's x j one of x plus of course an integration uh, constant so um, now all the hard work is basically done it's just a matter of, of rearranging some terms and then cleaning stuff up so our diffraction pattern in the end becomes one over two pi lambda z divided by rho naught squared and then we have the results of our integral that's going to be rho j1 rho and then we evaluate the whole thing between rho max and zero the lower bound zero will obviously result in in zero so we only need to worry about the, the upper bounds so we have one over two pi lambda z divided by rho naught squared um, and then we have rho max so where do we have rho max let's have a look at that so that's 2 pi uh, so that's 2 pi rho 0 a divided by lambda z so for rho we get 2 pi rho 0 
a divided by lambda z and then we have j1 of that same argument 2 pi rho 0 a divided by lambda z cleaning some stuff here so we have the 2 pi that will uh, that will cancel um, then we have the lambda z and rho so there will be another factor that will cancel so finally we have lambda z divided by rho zero a j1 2 pi rho zero a divided by lambda z now as a result this is good enough but you can clean this up a little bit more uh, simply by making use of, of an analogy uh, if you have a, a rectangular slit in that case the diffraction pattern looks something like sine of something over that something now here by analogy we could write this as for example a Bessel function of something divided by that something since this is proportional we can just introduce extra proportionality constants to just bring this to the denominator so that we have j1 of something divided by something so in our case in order to do that we will need to divide by by a squared 2 pi um, and again because it's proportional this proportionality constant doesn't really matter so we can write this as j1 of 2 pi rho 0 a divided by um, lambda z divided by that argument so divided by 2 pi rho 0 a divided by lambda z which is slightly more aesthetically pleasing but this is how you calculate uh, the diffraction pattern of a circular aperture.